Hey, how you all doing? I want to say thanks for watching. This is Jacob Found here. I found the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine in August of 1985, slash Peralta. They're one and the same. I found it following Adolf Ruth's map and the story uh, that he'd obtained it from a Peralta family in Sonora. Uh, and then after military training, I traced it down. The day I walked to it, my buddy with me, was just so excited because the canyon we were looking at it was like we were looking right at the map. Uh, see this map right here. Uh, I'll try to zoom in. I'm new to all this, so you'll have to bear with me. I'll try to put pictures on. This is the map I followed, and it looked just like this. It had a main shaft, a, a upper shaft, and then there was uh, ruins of a stone house or cave house uh, across the way, across the wash. That day there was a lot of stories that I was unaware of. We went into the mine shaft. It goes back quite a ways. Uh, it was pretty scary because we lost the light from the entrance and uh, the flashlight couldn't see the end of the of the shaft. So it was it was kind of scary. But anyway, that day we came out and uh, I drank a we ate lunch and I drank a Welch's grape juice and, and I'm telling you this because there, it's pertinent to what's going on with the story and how everything happened. But I crushed that can right in front of the mine shaft and it bothered me for days, weeks, because I always pick stuff up and for some reason that day that can I forgot. Anyway, we went across the way, we went up to the to the upper mine shaft and it was closed in but there was traces of uh, Chris Cola. Actually I thought it was turquoise or malachite at the time and there is malachite also. Excuse me. But anyway, we went across the ancient camp and uh, I picked up uh, what I thought was a geode of some kind, but it turned out years later that it was uh, prehistoric. ASU archaeologists told me it was prehistoric, whole hokum ceremonial miniature. I put it back several years later because something kept calling me back out there. So anyway, we went over the mountain. We were traveling all over the place that day. And we found uh, my buddy jumped into a hole and found these. There was three little pebbles that I pawned off at the time as copper. I mean, I said, you know, that's why they stopped digging. I mean, why would you just leave it like that? But I didn't know the story that Jacob had told Holmes. Brownie Holmes' manuscript has been disregarded, just like Jacob Waltz's map that he purportedly drew for Julia Thomas, but there was various copies made of it, so I could understand why. The map I went by turned out to be valid. Anyway, Holmes, in Holmes's manuscript, Jacob told his dad that uh, he traced the vein down and that the vein ran 350 feet the side of the mountain and bottomed out into a dry wash and the pea-sized pebbles of gold. Well, guess what we found that day? I didn't have a clue of that story. I also didn't know that the last time Jacob was out there, he said that the shaft went back quite a ways and there was a four foot hole that went down 12 feet to the vein. But the last time he was out there, he opened up that hole another two foot in diameter, six foot down, creating a lip. And that he cut ironwoods and crisscross ironwoods in there and then backfilled it with dirt. Well, I, it's dirt in the back of the shaft. My son and I, and I found it in 82, and then over the years I kept seeing other things, and I'll, I'll explain that. But in 99, my son and I went in there and we dug. There was probably maybe 50 bats in there at the time. When I first found it, there may have been 10, if even. And there's other things that are pertinent, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, I uh, we dug in 99, and it was dirt, it was diggable, but we went through a box of respirators because it's about 10 degrees hotter in that shaft than it is outside at any given time of the year. And I've been out there several times. Uh, but anyway, we kept, went through a whole box of respirators because you start sweating and the dust, I mean there's no circulation back there. But we did dig up a candle, a lid of a candle box and then we hit some pews and I told my son to stop just in case there's stories that Jacob set a booby trap, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, I don't know. So we stopped and I said maybe we can find the other diggings again, because it had been years. 
Because what had happened was, and I'm trying to be as quick and as brief as possible because these can only be 15 minutes long and I may not show you the mine till the next. I've already taken footage of the mine shaft and uh, Chris Cola and uh, Malachite and uh, Ancient Camp and the tubs because that was another thing on uh, Jacob's map, which is this map. And again, I'll try to zoom in or show pictures. However, I have to edit this. I'll do the best I can, so please bear with me. And again, thanks for being patient. Uh, but there's a rock horse here on the map. That rock horse is actually on the rim of the main mountain. One of the reasons why this was never considered geographically correct was because I've learned over the years that Jacob was telling Julia what to see and when she would see it and where to get to it. I found the pine trees. It says three times pines. Geologists say it's impossible for pine trees to grow in the southern hemisphere of that mountain range. I found six of them. It says three times pines. I found six of them, and a spring comes up right in between them. I also found the Apache camp. Uh, but anyway, that was shown to me later on. It, it, things kept being shown to me over the years and kept drawing me back out there. Now, I know that the big question is that, you know, why haven't I gotten the gold? Because you hear all these modern day people, oh, I'll get the gold, dig it out. Well, it's protected by the government. They, it's a national force. You can stake a claim out there still through the BLM, but then you have to file for a permit, a three day permit. Back in 83, when I checked, it was $250 to file the permit. And I was told by one of the rangers that had been there quite a while, said he'd only seen one come back in the years he'd been there, and that was for ASU. So that was kind of out of the picture. That just kind of red, sent red flags to me that the government just wants to know where it's at, and then they'll take it. Uh, I did relocate the diggings, the pea-sized pebbles of gold. I didn't take any footage of that because uh, another buddy of, was with me. And I just have this, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a, uh, not fear, but I get concerned because gold does funny things to people, no matter how well you know them. And, and it could be just because of all the bogus stories about Jacob. This purpose here is to vindicate Jacob Waltz. I believe that uh, Clay Worse said it best, that it's not about the gold anymore, it's about vindicating Jacob Waltz and, and showing that he really did have a mine shaft out there. And it turns out that the Peralta is and uh, is the same mine shaft. In fact, the area, I believe, is uh, probably, well, I can't say for sure. There's another shaft there that's been closed in right next to the main shaft that you can tell there's a trail. It used to be traveled quite a bit, and there was a wall, stone wall built around it, kind of. And that may have been the Peralta's headquarters. I'm not sure. It may have had something to do with the uh, ancient Native Americans. I, all that I can't tell you, but I do know that I found the pine trees on this map, I found the rock horse, and once you see the rock horse, you'll see it all the time. Not everybody sees it, it's kind of funny, it, and it's not an imagination, it's just a visual. And you can see it, and once you see it, you see it all the time. Uh, the tubs up the way, I believe, was probably the last thing he told Julia Thomas, and the last thing he put on his map simply because that told her that she was getting close to the mine shaft. The tubs are oh, probably a quarter of a mile, a half a mile up the canyon. And uh, the canyon is a boxed canyon, as Ruth said, but there is a crevice through that, can at the end of that canyon, that's accessible to other areas. I'm not going to get into all that because some of the modern day hunters had maybe figured it out. I was very careful not to pan out too far when I filmed, did the footage at the mine shaft. And <clears throat> let me get this out of the way. One of the reasons I wanted to film the mine shaft <clears throat> for purposes was to show the dirt in the back of the mine shaft. Now it's all rock until you get to the very back and it's dirt. Unfortunately, today there are thousands of bats, literally thousands of bats in there. And the bat guana, there never was bat guana in there. And now the bat guana is so 
massive. You can't tell where the dirt ends and the rock starts or vice versa. <clears throat> There's been coyotes in there, which there never was in the past. Uh, in fact, I found it interesting because the first time I found it in 82, I pulled out a dead javelina. And then when I saw it again, as I was looking for another area, because after I found the pine trees and then I saw the rock horse, I thought it was in another area. And I went out there, I got on a mesa to look in this other area, and lo and behold, I was looking right in that mine shaft again. And I thought, gee, is that that mine shaft? And I tracked down there. Sure enough, that can I smashed was still in front of the mine shaft, so I picked it up and carried it out. And then it was shortly after that I found out about the vase and stuff like that, took it back out there. Uh, so anyway, this is the proof, and there's a modern day, I call them modern day Jacob hunters, that made the comment that the essays of Jacob's gold shows that there's traces of Chris Cola. Well, that upper shaft, and you'll see it in the video, so please subscribe or stay tuned or uh, however we work this, uh, <laughs> because there's, it's, there's just vein after vein of Criscola and Malachite in this area. Like I said, the upper shaft has been closed in, so I don't know exactly what's in that upper shaft. I don't dig out there. My son and I did that little bit just to see basically if the dirt was loose enough, and it is. So that gave us proof that it had been backfilled. Uh, so anyway, there's uh, the purpose of this, Like again, like I said, is to vindicate Jacob Waltz. And hopefully I do that, and uh, hopefully you can accept the truth that uh, Jacob's map and the Ruth map lead to the same mine shaft. They're identical. When we look at the canyon, this is exactly what it looks like. I also took video of the ancient camp. I'll show pictures. I've had better pictures, but that computer was stolen back in 2012, and uh, so I don't have a lot of the pictures. Some of the hard copies I had to scan, and they might be a little blurry, but you can make it out. I'll also show you what could be Little Man. There are two things that could be Little Man. He has that in his map also. Uh, and uh, the ancient camp, there are ruins of a stone house. Back in 82, there was still wood from the the roof and everything in the, in the pit there, which I believe the pit, I make the comment in the video of the area that it could be uh, the funnel mine that the uh, Indians had spoke about, Native Americans had spoke about. But after thinking about it, I believe that's probably the dirt that Jacob used to backfill because the stumps of the ironwoods aren't too far from there. They're not in that same area, but they're up the hill a little bit, up the mountain a little bit, and they're not too far away. It would have been easy enough for him to track back and forth and do. Of course, back then, those people lived in the desert and did what they did. They were pretty good at pretty stable people, <clears throat> pretty rugged. So anyway, that's my story. It's the truth. Uh, I'll show you the footage, show you the mine shaft, and we can all determine now that the Dutchman's gold did exist. And I want you to take note that I don't call him the lost Dutchman because Jacob Holtz was never lost. And that's just a twist to all the stories there are out there. And there are thousands of stories out there about it. And other stories compounded on other stories. So anyway, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you the videos of the mine shaft and everything else. And, uh, oh, and the other thing is, too, is the stone maps. I don't believe they have anything to do with the Peraltas. And I found something else using the stone maps, which I will bring out in videos later on. So, thanks, God bless, and happy hunting.